Tonight's comedian is also an actor, he's a writer, he's the former lead singer of a touring rock band. Now he's traveling the U.S. performing inspirational comedy. He's appeared on shows like Good Morning America. He's the author of a book called Confound the Wise, which is not hard to do a lot of the times. A celebration of life, love, laughter, adoption, and the joy of children with special needs. Please join me in giving a great big Huckabee Theater welcome to Dan Culp. Uh, I became a new dad about 14 years ago. <laughs> And uh, in order to do that, my wife and I, we flew all the way to China. Because you know pregnant women with their late night cravings. <laughs> my wife wanted authentic Chinese food. <sighs> no, we adopted, we adopted. And uh, yeah. Oh, hey. I'm a terrible father, so you shouldn't encourage me like that. I learned a couple things when I first stepped off that plane in China. The first thing I learned was that I was the fattest guy in all of China. <laughs> My wife, she's tall and thin and pretty, you know. Together we must have looked like the number 10 roaming around the countryside. <laughs> Sightseeing. <laughs> Yeah, and everything changed when I became a dad, too. Everything changed. I used to tour the country in a rock band. I had high hopes and dreams for my life. I used to dream that maybe one day I would write that one hit song that would help change the world. Now I find myself writing songs like this. There's a party on the potty, and Poopy and Pee Pee are invited. There's a party on the potty, and Poopy and Pee Pee will be there. You can tinkle on the toilet and let everybody know it, they'll be delighted. There's a party on the potty with something that smells different in the air. Everybody, there's a party on the potty. You guys are weird. I don't know, I just got back into some serious songwriting again though. Um, I saw that movie, I Can Only Imagine. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and that inspired me, you know, because I watched that and I thought, I'm gonna write a song based on that movie. <laughs> Don't steal my ideas, all right? <laughs> Don't me to steal that. Oh, everything changed. But we adopted who my wife and I have been told is the first child adopted out of China to the U.S. who has Down syndrome. And, yeah, oh. <laughs> Everything changed, but here's the cool thing, too. I grew up with four siblings who have Down syndrome, and three of them were adopted. And so it had occurred to me then that I was going to be like my dad, exhausted, Well, two years later, my wife's on the internet, and she th finds out about a girl also in China, and she has something very rare called Elfie syndrome. It's where part of her ninth chromosome is missing. My wife looked at me and said, I think we're supposed to be her parents. So we flew back over to China. We adopted Danielle and brought her home. And then two years after that, my wife is on the internet again. <laughs> and I've been praying that our computer would develop a virus. <laughs> I've been opening every suspicious email link I received. 
My wife found out about this little boy in Ukraine named Shay. He had spina bifida. And she looked at me and she said, I think we're supposed to be his parents. And I said, honey, how can we possibly do that? I mean, we don't have the time. I'm busy writing hit songs based on movies <laughs> that are based on hit songs. I said, we don't have the time. We don't have the money. We live very modestly. I said, we don't have the space. We live in a very, very small house. I said, honey, I don't have the energy. Haven't you noticed that I get winded watching our children put on their shoes to go outside and play? <laughs> That's what my wife said. She looked at me and she said, honey, I know all that and all that is true. But all I know is God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the call. And I said, honey, I said, we've got to stop reading the Bible. <laughs> now, here's the funny way God works. Two days after we committed to adopting Shay, my wife found out she was pregnant. That's right. And two weeks after getting little Shay home from Ukraine, my wife gave birth to Emily. And shortly after that, we gave birth to little Stephen. And then we gave those two up for adoption. <laughs> we figured it was like the take a penny, give a penny tray you see at the gas station. We'd taken a few, it was our turn to give back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have been a terrific crowd. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful, Dan. Oh. I think we're all blessed but amazed that you and your wife, Elizabeth, were willing to reach out and take kids that others just said, we, we just couldn't do it. What was the motivation? What was deep down in you and your wife to do that? Well, you know, I have my adoption story from when I was growing up. But um, when I was dating my wife, she is a physical therapist, mm -hmm. and she went to China for a few months to work in orphanages in very rural China. When she was there, she saw some really horrible, horrible things. And she came home and she told me her story and it changed my life. Wow. And um, we started dating, you know, again, we'd sort of been on a break, started dating again. And she said, I have two requirements for any man that I'm going to marry. The first one is he has to be willing to adopt an orphan from China. I have to get one out, she said. Mm. And the second requirement was that man had to be intensely good looking. <laughs> well, she won. There you go. Nailed it. I think she nailed it. <laughs> well, I, I want everyone to know you can keep up with Dan Culp, and you can also book him for an event and get his book, Confounding the Wise. Very easy to do. Go to Huckabee.tv for all the links.